good morning everybody sorry for the bugs on the windshield it's a good sign it means summer's here or it's on the way spring is here we're here in st cloud minnesota this is the cheapest diesel fuel i can find three dollars 64 cents us per us gallon it's about a dollar 30 canadian per liter with the conversions of today i'm gonna go in here grab some fuel fill around up all the way up i'm at about a quarter tanks right now so i'm expecting to buy about 500 liters i gotta make this quick because i gotta get to my delivery turn left on no, 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 Karen. I need to buy some cheap juice first. This truck stop is not my favorite to pull into. Though uh, they do usually have clean showers available, unlike my not. And coffee is always available here. It's just the parking situation here isn't, uh, it's terrible. But I guess, you know, it's hard to find perf perfection. There's always something, right? There's always something. They also, uh, I don't think they sell DEF at the pumps here no they have to let's see why right, they got def here whatever ignore that what do i know let's grab some juice let's get out of here i'm gonna save myself almost 100 bucks the fuel in here okay the numbers are in i actually bought 609 liters not 500 a little more than i thought uh, 161 gallons u.s gallons since I picked this up in uh, Saskatchewan, this whole trip, I've filled up partially until now. So this whole trip together, I've burned 38.49 liters per 100 kilometers or 6.11 miles per US gallon. It costed me about 60 cents per kilometer to drive this truck. And this fuel up cost me $795 Canadian or $585 US dollars. Remember when it used to cost me like $1,200, $1,300 to fill up a few months ago? The price coming down to $1.30 per liter now, or $3.63 per US gallon, dropped my fuel purchase now from 9, 10, 11, 12, like four, four, $500, just one fill up. That's how much cheaper, that's how much the fuel prices affect my business and the groceries on your shelf and everything else you have that comes on a truck. That's, that's how it affects it so quickly. And that's why all the prices shoot up. Now that fuel prices are coming down, are we gonna see all the prices of everything come down too? I don't know. I'm not in charge of that. I'm not in charge of that. It is what it is. Okay, let's uh, let's get going. I want to go get this lumber off, and then I can go home. Let's get back out there. Okay, so the price here with all the conversions and everything was a dollar thirty Canadian per liter. The fuel price up in Manitoba, just over the border in St. Agathe, at also a Flying J, was $1.66. So that's 36 cents per liter cheaper down here with all the conversions said and done. I bought 609 liters. That means by fueling here, I spent $219 less than I would have had I fueled back home. That's $219 that can go into my savings account. Or let's be honest, that's $219 that'll go towards new tires very soon. Why is this Beamer parked over here? Oh, it says passenger vehicle parking only. Oh, because they're allowed to, that's why. I see, that's new. That's new, okay. No problem there, Mr. Beamer, you're good. My bad. You shouldn't judge people, Josh. Well, I didn't know. That's a new thing. I haven't seen those signs there before. You used to park trucks up and down all the time. Oh, we got traffic coming from the left. We got action. It is so nice outside. It's 26 degrees Celsius. Celsius in Fahrenheit. 
26 degrees Celsius is equivalent to 78.8 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a beautiful day. That is my perfect temperature right there. If I could pick one perfect temperature that I would want every single day. I need about 25 Celsius. later than I wanted to. I wanted to be here two hours ago, but thankfully still made it well within their hours of operation. So we're getting unloaded. I'm waiting to get unloaded. I got all my straps off. I'm parked where they wanted me. Now I just got to wait for them to come and uh, get it off my trailer, sign the paperwork, and I'm going to head home. It's a little bit of a longer deadhead to get home from here and probably be about eight hours driving, 500 miles. That was my choice. Uh, I want to be home for Mother's Day, and this was uh, the best option that I had. I was given either the option of going home with this load and then being home Thursday, Friday, Saturday, no, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days so that I'm home for Mother's Day or I could deliver this and come home empty. Uh, I figured this way might be more profitable. We'll see. Missing three days of potential revenue and an exchange or the other option would be one day of no revenue deadheading. Uh, it's hard to tell sometimes, right, with fuel prices and everything, but this is what I chose anyways, this is my choice. So as soon as we're done here, I'm gonna start heading home. I'm not gonna make it home tonight yet, there's no way. It's 3.30 3 here now. Eight hours, I'd be home like middle of the night. Uh, we'll see. I'll probably sleep in the truck, get a good sleep, and then get to the house early in the morning, and uh, I'll take over baby duty, and Britt can sleep in, let her sleep through the morning, catch up a little bit, and We'll go from there. That's the plan right now anyways. We'll see. We'll see if the plan changes or not.
empty flatbed behind me. And I'm at the Loves in Drayton, North Dakota. I had 18 minutes left on my clock when I parked. It's quite empty here, actually. I thought it would be a little bit uh, fuller. I don't know if you can hear it. There's an alarm going off over there. I bet you that's going to be going off all night. Good thing it's not too loud. I shouldn't be able to hear it inside my truck. But I definitely wouldn't be able to have my... I guess I could just put earplugs in too. I mean, I, I can sleep. I know I talk often about having a quiet night. I go out of my way to find the most quiet spot. But I can still sleep if there's noise. It's not like I can't get sleep. It's just if I have the option, why not find a quieter spot? Like, why would I park beside a reefer trailer if I can go and park in a parking spot that's quieter without one right beside me, right? But if I have to park beside him, it doesn't bother me really. The engine fan kicking on and off, that's my least favorite neighbor to have when they have those loud, like my truck has a loud engine fan. I know how loud it is. So if I do have to idle it through a night, I've said this before, like in the really cold parts of winter or whatever, I click my engine fan to on so it stays on all night. So at least then it's a steady sound and not constantly kicking on and off and on and off and on and off because that gets very annoying especially if you're at high idle. And you want to have, have your truck at high idle if you're parked. You never want to leave your truck idling at low idle. Always bring it up to about 1,000 RPM. Uh, if you leave it at low idle, the oil from the bottom of your oil pan isn't properly getting up to the top of your motor to lubricate the top of your motor. You need to get that idle up to protect your engine. But anyways, that, that makes the engine fan kick on and makes it really loud and annoying, right? Well, if I have to park beside someone who's a little noisy, I do. And if it's really that, that bad, I can put earplugs in. I risk not hearing my alarm in the morning, though. But usually what I do is I wake up halfway through the night and I take them out. I've never slept through an alarm because of earplugs. But I don't wear them that often either. Only when I have to. Can you, still, can you guys hear that alarm going off back there? It's very faint. I don't even know if this microphone's going to pick it up or not. It's like a car alarm. Like, woo, 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 woo. I wonder if someone tried to break into that business next door and the alarm's going off. So then we're gonna have cops all over here. The fuel price here at Loves and Drayton is $3.98 per US gallon. And that equals $1.44 Canadian per liter after all conversions. I topped off my tanks here again. That's uh, because it's, it's still cheaper than what it is just over the border in Canada. And I don't know which direction I'm gonna be heading next week. I figure I'll just pop them up now and call it a night. Old Blue's been doing good. Really good. She's getting some special attention next weekend though, eh? in, in one week. Getting polished from head to toe. Might even do the headache rack too. The headache rack was part of the original plan and I still want to get it done. But I'm going to get my polisher guy to take a look at it and see how much work it's going to be for him and what he wants to charge for it because it's uh so what we are getting done and we're getting done the wheels all the outside wheels the tanks the steps the front grill and stacks i believe i told him anything i can shine i want sh i want to shine and i want him to take a look at this see this is this this could be polished to a mirror finish you could see yourself in there like a mirror and i want to get that done but i think he wants those lights taken out and those lights are riveted in for some reason not screwed in so uh, I want to replace them anyway so I, I might just wait till later in the year and polish this off in summertime or maybe even next year and just like give it a good cleaning now but I want to replace all those lights up there with uh, lights that match the back here a clear lens so all of these match Now yeah, we'll see. Eh. One thing at a time, one thing at a time. There's a lot of things at home that need my attention and need the attention of our bank account as well. And that always comes first. So we gotta make sure that's all taken care of. So of course I'm sad I couldn't make it home today. The traffic in Minneapolis really held me up a lot. That was bad. I'm filming this on a Friday and it's one of the first really warm Fridays of the season. So everybody and their dog had their boats out and we're pulling them through. I told you that before, right? Everybody's going to the lake, they're going camping, they're going to their cottage. So everybody who has any place outside the city was on the highway. Just plugged everything up from Minneapolis 
all the way past Clearwater, almost to Sock Center. It was, it was, it was nuts. So that really slowed me down, and now I couldn't make it back home tonight. But I would have been back home late anyways. I just, I could have stopped here and then gotten home earlier tomorrow. Now I'm going to get home, oh, midday, late morning to midday. But at least I'm getting home, right? At least I'm getting home, and I'll be home for Mother's Day. So you're watching this after Mother's Day already. Hope you all had a great Mother's Day. I hope you made it special for the, for the mothers in your life. And if you are a mother, happy belated Mother's Day to you. It's a big one for us this year. That's why I'm talking about it a lot. Uh, for Britt, it's the first one. Uh, you know, it's, it's the first one since we've had Theo. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, you guys understand. Big deal. Let's see how it goes. So I'll see you tomorrow for the ride home. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know where you're from. Whatever you want to say down there helps me out a lot. And I'll see you tomorrow.